Uh, thanks very much. Uh, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, present where we are as a company. I've got a very few slides because I think we wanted to open this up for uh, questions. But uh, uh, I have a forward-looking statement. You can read it at your leisure. Um, we really are the scientific leaders in TCR T-cell therapy, and I make that claim um, advisedly. It, it is much more complicated than people realize, and there are many, many hurdles to overcome uh, in terms of actually identifying the right peptide, the target, identifying, validating it, making the T-cell receptor um, both uh, in an engineered fashion and, uh, and actually the clinical trials are much, much, uh, quite hard to organize. But the great news is that this is a technology which leads straight to products. If you could have the technology that can cover the ground from target identification all the way through to TCR, um, ability to make TCRs, you can um, actually go straight from an idea to a product. So we have a lot of INDs open and many more to come. This year is the most exciting year by a long talk because we are going to get data on our own products which are not partnered um, in solid tumors. And uh, we have also just released some very strong data in a second solid uh, tumor with our NYC program uh, which is uh, jointly done with uh, GSK. We are building an integrated cell, a cell uh, therapy company. We've got manufacturing both of the vector and we are actually making the cells for patients in our own plant in, our, in the Navy Yard in Philadelphia. And we're pretty well financed. We have more than $200 million in the bank. I'm going to put up one slide. This is the slide that differentiates us between us and all of the others. And this is an attempt at showing that um, you need to be highly specific in the affinity of your product if you want it to work and not be cross-reactive. So along the top row, we're going from left to right as you look at it, the affinity is increasing. And these are, uh, these are what's called an early spot assay, so you simply mix in T cells with cancer cells. If the, if the T cell recognizes the cancer cell, um, you will uh, get a brown dot, and if it's activated, you get a brown dot. So what you've got on the left-hand side is you can see the natural affinity T cell receptor, no recognition, and as you go further to the right, you get more and more recognition. The bottom row, though, is equally significant because this is a safety profile. This is saying, is there a point at which you um, increase the affinity and it starts to recognize other things? And because the bottom row does not present the right target. And you could see as you go from left to right, eventually you come to a point where it does start recognizing things. That would probably kill the patient. It would recognize something other than what you want. The ability to find that uh, absolute uh, affinity is really, really important. I can give you a couple of examples of why it's so important. We have an MWASA program, which we've got great data on. There was an almost identical uh, uh, program, which Kite ran with the NCI. So it was the same investigator, the same patients, but it wasn't affinity enhanced. We've got great data. They dropped their program. And I think that tells you all you need to know about uh, engineering of the T cells. If you don't get the affinity right, it doesn't matter what bells and whistles you put on it, it won't see the cancer cell. I said we have multiple INDs. This is our proprietary program where we'll be uh, releasing data this year. Uh, the name of the target is on the left. Then you have the indications, the cancer. We have put out safety data on MAJ10. MAJ4 is our most important product. It's in lots of different cancers at quite a high percentage. And we'll be releasing the safety data on that later this year. And, uh, and also efficacy response data from both MAJ10 and MAJ4 um, and uh, safety data on AFP. Just to be clear why this is so exciting, you can actually go into a cold tumor, something that doesn't actually uh, have any T cell infiltration, there are no tills, there's nothing exciting. These are very difficult to treat tumors, and you can see uh, the results in there. In the, in the baseline at the top, you can see a thing, I suppose, about the size of my fist. By week four, it's pretty well gone, and by week eight, it's gone. You can get rid of very large solid tumors if you get the, uh, if you get the product right and the targeting right. I said it's the most exciting year in the, in the history of the company, and that's really because of this slide. There's a mass of data coming out this year. All we have given, which we gave at the JP Morgan conference, is the, the, the safety data on the first eight patients with MAJ10. We are going to give safety data on MAJ4 in the second quarter, and then in the second half, we will have response data from both our products, and we'll have safety data from AFP, and obviously beyond that will have many things. So this year is going to be a pivotal, critical year for the company in terms of data delivery. And that's all I wanted to say. Great. Can you uh, talk a little bit more, James, about solid tumors um, and why maybe CAR-T's 
can't access that market as easily and, and what the best data are so far showing that yours can uh, while those can't, while those technologies can't. Yes, I, this is biology, so I think there are no hard and fast answers. If it was physics, it would be easier to give an answer. Our general theory is that it may be harder, it may be to do with the antigen density on the target molecule. In other words, when you actually target something with a T cell receptor, um, there are only um, probably 20 to 80 copies of the target on the target cell. So there's a very small number in contrast to the thousands of copies which a CAR T cell has to have on the, uh, on the target cell. And there must be something in that dynamic. If that's true, it's going to be very difficult for CAR T cells to work in any solid tumor because it's the feature of solid tumors that they downregulate these, uh, uh, these antigens. So if that is true, uh, it's essentially a fundamental difference between a CAR T cell and, uh, and a T cell receptor. So we just have to wait. In terms of data, there's really no solid tumor data in CAR T cells that I know of. There's very little data um, out there with TCRs as well. Uh, Dr. Rosenberg at the NCI published a lot of NYC data some years ago on melanoma and with synovial sarcoma, and that, but that's all our TCR. He, was, he, he put it into the clinic all those years ago. We then had a collaboration with Carl June. So we've, we've sort of, the data in NYC really belongs to us. I think interestingly, and just um, backing up this concept of affinity, there have been NYU of vaccines with absolutely no responses, some stable disease, but no responses. And that's because, of course, the generation of T cell responses, which they engender, is still of low affinity T cells. So th there isn't anything right there at the moment, but I, you know, I watch this space with great uh, pleasure. I've just been at ACR and I didn't see anything there either. So it's, uh, we just wait and see what other people come up with. So if you, if you come up with great data in the year or two ahead, um, I think other companies will be scrambling to catch up with TCR technology. So could you talk a little bit about the barriers that you have, uh, let's say, to entry, whether IP manufacturing or any other type of barrier? I think there are a lot of uh, barriers to entry, actually. I think the first is, bizarrely, making sure that the right peptide is identified. It's not easy to identify the peptide. Um, and any technology that uses pulsing of target cells to see if the peptide is there is completely is, is going to get false positives. So there are at least two companies uh, which we absolutely are certain uh, are chasing the wrong peptide. They have programs in the clinic. We've made high affinity T cell receptors and we have never found that target on a cancer cell. So I think just the general technology, the second technology is the making the T cell receptor itself. There are a lot, although you may just think it's just a T cell receptor, there's a very different, big qualitative difference between a good T cell receptor with good recognition, which can be engineered, is easy to manufacture, and poor ones. And I think that's really the core to our, our technology. In terms of manufacturing, I think the, uh, one of the keys to solid tumor efficacy is persistence of cells. Now, the only two companies that I know with long-term persistence of cells in, uh, in humans as opposed to any other system is a, a Novartis with CAR T cells and us. And I don't think that's a coincidence, and that's because our manufacturing method both derives from the University of Pennsylvania and in particular uses uh, some magnetic uh, so-called dynabeads to activate the T cells during the expansion phase, and that does seem to produce a much longer persisting T cell. And that's going to be a barrier because uh, we have an exclusive license for all, uh, for these beads for all T cell receptors and Novartis has it for all CAR T cells. So that is a barrier to entry. And I think that's where sort of manufacturing crosses over into the biology. For some reason, these cells seem much fitter. So we've got data four years out in myeloma and I think two and a half years out in, uh, in uh, sarcoma where the cells, our cells are still there. So 90% of cancers and deaths are solid tumors. So I suspect that the other question the market might ask if you show some success is uh, what kind of cancer types can you actually target? What can you rule out or rule in uh, if your technology is working extremely well? So because the CAR Ts are so fantastic, we're not looking at hematological tumors. There's no reason you shouldn't, but, but the data are so fantastic we're not. So essentially, I think that we can look at anything which presents the target, that we haven't seen anything that you'd rule out. And I think 
Just like uh, if, if one thinks about uh, breast cancer and HER2 new, it's more important that you're HER2 new positive than you quotes have breast cancer if you want to take a septin. In other words, you're actually being categorized by the target rather than where the disease originated. And that's, I think, going to be increasingly the field uh, is people are going to think, well, do you present this antigen? In which case, you could be indifferent as to which cancer you have. Having said that, I am absolutely certain the efficacy will be better in some cancers than, uh, than others because I think factors such as how beaten up the patient's immune system is, how long they've been on different types of treatment may affect it. We don't know the answer to that, but I am just guessing that it won't be uniform in all cancers. But as long as a cancer presents the target in a reasonable percentage of the cells, I think it will be a target for a T-cell receptor. And then as far as... Um the overall value of your company. How, how important is it, it, is it to have a big biopharma collaborator? What, what sort of value is added through the collaboration? So um, we, uh, we took, GSK became our partner three years ago. Uh, we were actually running off an overdraft at the time, so I'd say it was reasonably important. Uh, uh, I couldn't make the next wage bill without a partnership, so I'd say that was very important. They, they've, been a, uh, they've been a supportive partner, but they're actually not involved in running the programs. So we hold the IND, we have done the manufacturing, we hold every contract with the hospital, we actually have the rights to the Dynabeads, et cetera. So it's not, it's not impeded us in that sense. Um, we've simply run the programs and they've been watching. In September, they exercised their option. It was all run under an option agreement. In September, they exercise their options. So we are now transferring the program to them and in about a couple of months they will take over the program. And actually that will help tremendously for us because then we can devote all our resources to our three in-house programs, which is fundamentally what investors are interested in, is, is whether we can repeat the NYSO data in any solid tumor with any of our three programs. And what, what technologies um, are you looking forward to in terms of uh, the emergence and evolution. I noticed you have a collaboration with the Universal Cells uh, for allogeneic products. Um, so could you talk about that and nuclease-based <coughs> gene editing or any other important technologies that you feel are relevant? So we do have a deal with uh, Universal Cells. It's been a very successful collaboration. This is based on the concept of instead of taking a T cell and knocking things out and knocking things back in, we start with a stem cell and we try to create a stem cell that can differentiate into a T cell with whatever features we like. And that's really the expertise of uh, universal cells. So it's, it's slightly different from the normal allogeneic, uh, allogeneic programs. And one of the reasons we like that is in between every gene editing, every editing step that you could take to do that, you can prove that you've only got a single clone and you can grow that out. You can actually prove you've stabilized the, uh, the cells, and that's something we particularly like. So we follow gene editing. We do do gene editing in-house. We're very cautious uh, about it, and the reason we're cautious about it is that if a T cell um, recognizes something which you don't want it to recognize, it will kill it, and it will set off a, a, an immune uh, reaction. So you have to be very careful about the preciseness, the precision of the insertion and making absolutely certain that it can't turn into something you don't want it to. And I, we are following it extremely closely. We are playing around with it in-house. Um, but it's not our most immediate uh, source of new technology. The most immediate source of new technology we're interested in is to, um, once we get the data back from AJ4, let's say we get some good responses, but we would like to improve them, we have a series of in-house second generation programs which add a second feature as well as a high affinity T cell receptor into the cell and before you put it back into the patient. And we think those may be the way to deal with um, the tumor microenvironment or the concept of epitope spreading, which many people think is the key to get a long, a durable uh, response in, in cancers. So we, in other words, we have a whole series of uh, technologies um, in-house. We are... We're, at any one time, we're probably looking at four or five external technologies. We probably get 200 a year shown to us, and we're looking at four or five at any one time, and we are from external sources. I mean, there is some brilliant work being done around the world in this field. Great. And my last question, and maybe I'll make it two. Um, so has gene therapy arrived, in your view, and what is the market missing about the space or adaptive you? 
It's definitely arrived. I mean, I think once you see responses like the, uh, the scans I showed you, nothing's going to stop this being investigated forevermore. I mean, once you can actually get rid of a solid tumor just using a single infusion of T-cells, which takes uh, a short time, I don't think that's ever going to stop. So I think, I think it's arrived. I think the last nine months have shown the arrival in a number of different ways. We had two approvals from the FDA, so they weren't just kidding about being enthusiastic. We've had two major takeovers. We've had the big deal with Sangamo, with Gilead. We, there have been all the signs, um, and GSK actually exercising the option over our technology. These are big companies now getting involved. The regulators are involved. The major companies are involved. So I think the, um, uh, I think the, uh, uh, it has gone mainstream, and I think that so it's, it's come to pass. In terms of us, what what is it missing? I think is the. Uh, I think if we can show some responses later this year, I think people uh, have missed just how broadly applicable this technology is because if it works in several solid tumors, that's going to be a very uh, major business. Great. Thank you, James.